Hi guys, this is Captain Duncan McCammond. In this video, I thought we'd talk about factions. Let's get to work. First, modern games and the factions that are involved in those games. I would like to see more special forces units from other countries. A nation's special forces are its mighty rapier, a scalpel, not a broadsword or a hammer. They are essential to a country's right and ability to defend itself. Some of them are the coolest units in the world. I'm speaking specifically, of course, of the SAS, Spetsnaz, U.S. Army Rangers, U.S. Navy SEALs, Marine Special Operations Command, Delta Force, the Polish Girom, and the Israeli Commandos. If viewers would like an exhaustive treatment of this, Please go. leave a comment below requesting it. Good to go. Next, historical. Sure. It would be cool if other countries that may have been fighting at the time were covered. History is to be learned from and understood, so you can see how different power players play at different periods of history. What a nation chooses to do when it goes to war and how it chooses its strategies to win that war. Technology between different countries, whether shared or different, and how a country chooses to field that technology. So it is necessary to be able to view the war from different perspectives, whether in the air, on the ground, or in an armored vehicle. It would be nice if World War II games included the ability to play the British, the French, and the Poles so you could see different aspects of how a country fights, their strategies, their tactics, and their kit. It seems in many of the newer games that we totally discount all the other nations involved. We're only interested in the US versus the Japanese, or the Russians versus the Germans. I know some commentators have said that the European front has been overdone. However, most of the games that include the European front won't play on most modern systems. If one wanted to go back and play one of those games, one would have to go back and find one of those older systems. These are normally quite frustrating to find, and some of these games are just so old school as to be laughable. It would be great to have newer games that cover these aspects that run on newer systems. In conclusion, I find that both modern and historical games should have multiple viewing angles of the situation, of whatever story that the game is trying to tell, and bluntly, so the player will not get bored. Finally, with historical games, it's always entertaining to explore different things that happened or could have happened historically in that period of time. In modern terms, it is nice to see what each country has at its disposal to be used as a scalpel to deal with threats to that nation's net security. If you have any questions or comments about these subjects, please leave them in the comments below. Please make sure your comments are polite and respectful of others. Constructive discussion in which there are differences of opinion is great and beneficial to the gaming community. But contempt for others is not edifying to anyone. And be nice to your poor host as well. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Until next week, this is Captain Duncan McCammond. Hold the line. Be strong. And courageous.